Okay, hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am here today with the most casual video I think I've ever uploaded. I'm sitting on my living room floor. That is purely because I can't lift my A1 portfolio up the stairs and there's just not enough room really in my bedroom to like show you all the work. So I thought it's on the floor, it was easier, it was comfier, it's a bit more casual. Today I'm gonna to talk through the work that I did on my art foundation course. This is the last video, I promise. I know that I've gone on and on and on and on about this, but I promise you after this, I I don't plan on really talking about my foundation course again. For those of you that are watching this maybe because you're applying to a foundation or you're thinking of doing one, I did the art foundation course at Leeds Art University. I have just finished studying there. I've been there for the last year since September, so like last academic year. I have not held back with like my opinion of it. Personally, I didn't love the course. I do see why it is beneficial. Um, I'm gonna talk through my work first and then like at the end, like talk about why I'm not going to university, why I didn't love the course, why I even did the course in the first place because I have got a lot of questions about it. People seem very confused, which is totally understandable because I feel like foundation courses aren't really spoken about very often. I know that in my school, I wasn't ever told about it. I actually heard about it through other YouTubers doing it, other friends applying to it. I literally knew nothing. My school gave me zero information about it. So I kind of did it off my own bat. So if that's why you're watching this video, then hi, I'm gonna be your uh, older sister. So the way the course worked was that it was split into like three sections. There was like stage one, stage two, and stage three. Stage one was completely experimental with loads of different art forms and different like, to be honest, it was mainly focused on abstract art and I hated it, like I really did not enjoy it. It took me back to year 10 GCSE art lessons and I was not there for that. And that was kind of the main thing that put me off, I think because that was at the beginning, I was like, no, I don't like it. And then I kind of never really got into it after that. The second stage was a lot better. That was probably my favorite stage just because it was experimental, but within your specialization. So basically at around Christmas time, we specialized into one specific area. Or it might've been earlier than that. It might've been November time, but I picked magpie and that stands for moving image animation graphic design photography and illustration and then within that you kind of pick one area again so for stage two you're experimenting with just those five areas and then in stage three you pick one of those five areas so it kind of like gradually gets rid of all the other art forms so i went from doing abstract art and a bit of everything to doing moving image advertising all of that stuff Wait, is it advertising or is it animation? Don't know what the A stands for. Anyway, I went from doing that to just doing photography and that is what I'm gonna show you because that is the work I have here. I do have my other books from stage two and stage one, but they are literally just a mess and the work isn't complete and it's just me experimenting with different graphic design stuff and different things that just didn't really work out. So I'm gonna show you my final project because that will kind of give you an inclination as to like what, you, what your end goal is. The way that they get you to do it at Leeds Art, I mean, I think this is different depending on like where you study but the way they get you to do it at Leeds is they split it into three books so I have here the three that I used I've got stickers all over them because I'm five and they get you to use a studio notebook a reflective planner and a, a critical journal so this is my where is my critical journal um so your critical journal is kind of what you use to get your inspiration from other artists so they're very very keen for you to use other artists work as your inspiration they're very keen for you to be in the library doing research. I did actually really like this. I think that that was beneficial um, and we didn't really do that at A level so I thought that was different. Oh my god there is a squirrel at the door. So yeah this kind of looked like this. So this was a full book pretty much. You had to get 20 entries and they had to be like pretty in depth from various different sources. So there are some websites, there are some books, like photocopied books which is what this is. And they're all analysed, they're all like highlighted. I don't know if you can really see. Let me show you a page that I like. I can't remember which artists I really like. Okay, yeah, Adrian Salinger. They were a really big influence on my project. The work kind of looked like this. It was all like documented. And then if I ever went to any museum, so this was when I went to the Museum of Modern Art in New York. That was basically what this book was used for. It was like research, it was quite a lot of writing, a lot of words. Um, I actually did quite enjoy doing this. I enjoyed finding the sources that I enjoyed sticking them in. And I thought this was the easiest to do. Like if I had nothing to do, I would just do one of these because it was easy. So I had 20 of those. And then I had alongside it a studio notebook. Now this was more my like rough working. Um, so this was kind of how the project started. So I started 
started with um, a bunch of research. So my final project was about loneliness at university and how it can actually feel really isolating. We were speaking from personal experience. Just basically about how the experience that you have of university maybe doesn't match up to the one that you've heard a lot about when you move. Um, so for me, definitely, when I moved to uni, all I'd heard was good things. I've never heard anybody really say they didn't enjoy it. And it was a shock for me because I didn't enjoy it. I didn't like moving away. I was really homesick. I think generally the university lifestyle just isn't for me. Like, don't get me wrong, I love going out, but I don't really think that that way of life is what I want to do right now and I found it difficult to adjust and like I was really honest about that in my vlog so I thought it would be good to put that into my photography work because I was struggling to think of an idea that was like me and that was also meaningful so I went with that. So my studio notebook was filled with research so this is a conversation with students that I like recorded, typed up, highlighted and then did some spider diagrams. I don't know how well you can see this on the white but yeah just <laughs> there are spider diagrams basically and then I did what's this? Oh some like composition ideas for what kind of work I liked. Basically it was a lot of rough work and then my own photography started to come into it so I did a couple of photo shoots in student bedrooms which is what I focused my whole project on was like how somebody's personality can be reflected in such a tiny little room and I think it was actually really interesting I've never seen any work like this before so when I started researching it it was really interesting because it wasn't like anything I'd done it wasn't my usual style at all um stuff like this and then I did a few more photo shoots looking at the contrast between boys rooms and girls room just put, putting them into my book like this it was very similar to photography a level or the way that I did my a level anyway lots of photo shoots lots of you know experimentations with cameras and printing on different papers and printing on different after different edits and stuff like that and then I started looking at photo books so I kind of knew that I wanted to make a book I've never done anything like that before I thought if I'm here I might as well try something new and they had really good facilities at the uni like I'm not slating Leeds Art Uni at all I think their facilities are amazing they've got so much stuff and if you're looking to go straight into an undergraduate degree the undergraduate building has just been redone and it is amazing like it is state-of-the-art stuff like I'm not slagging off Leaves Art Uni, I think it is a good university. I think the whole city is full of good universities. But yeah, anyway, so I looked at doing photo books, did a lot of research on like journalists that had looked into photo books and the benefits of them and how um, images can be used to communicate messages better than words in some cases. And then I went back to taking some more pictures. So I like this idea of the dark focus. They're not showing up very well, but this is my flatmate playing a computer game. The message behind these was that actually these walls can be quite isolating and you can feel quite alone. And then I started looking at people's personal possessions and photographing what made their rooms them. So this is obviously pictures from my room if you watch my vlogs. Um, and I took pictures in a few different flats, a few different people. Obviously not that many people wanted me to like delve deep into their stuff because that is a little bit invasive. Would have made good photos though. So I took pictures like this and then I took pictures of the prints, so the curtains in my flat, the bedding, rugs and stuff like that. And then I photographed every item in slightly different ways. I was just redoing it and redoing it until I was really happy with it. And once I was happy with the images, I started to design the book. Now this took a little while because I used Adobe InDesign. I'd never used that before, completely new. They did a few tutorials, a few workshops, a few drop-in sessions. So I went to those, kind of learned the basics and then I taught myself the rest. And I started putting all of my things into InDesign. And and then it started to really come together. I sat with my tutor and we messed with the font for so long because I just wasn't happy with it. That is pretty much the end of this book. So I then from there got the book printed and this is what it looks like. So this was my final piece for the project. It basically is just a book with the curtain pattern behind it. I think it's just really clever how I did it. If I say so myself, because this curtain pattern will haunt me for the rest of my life, literally. So this is a, I think it was 28 pages in the end, 28 page book with quotes from the interview that you guys just saw. So like the interviews in that book, I took direct quotes from my flatmates and put them alongside some of the pictures of said flatmates. If I do a close up, you guys can see this better. The quotes are quite depressing, I'm not gonna lie. Some pages like this are just full block images because obviously I am a photographer. Yeah, and then some pages are slightly split with the print at the bottom. You can pause it and read it if you want to. This page I think is really effective because it's so simple. And it basically just goes on like this. There's lots of photos of rooms and I like this one. This is a double page spread of like some of my own possessions in my own flat that were just on the floor. And I think it just, just tell a story of people's personality like it really 
does. I really like this one as well. I think this was really effective because he didn't know this was being taken. So I know that this is like genuine him just sat looking out the window. Yeah, I think it communicates what I was trying to get across really well. The fact that those rooms and their experience at university can be completely what you make of it. So when you're in those four walls, if you're feeling isolated and you're not feeling like you're at home, then that comes across. And I think that it was a weird route to explore but that was where I headed with it and I passed with that. So my exhibition was just four of my strongest pictures up on the wall. They don't show up very well, they're very very dark but they're basically my flatmate looking sad and slightly alone and isolated and a little bit uh, cut off from society and the world and it's meant to be like that they're meant to be dark but you know when you print dark pictures and they don't really turn out as well as they look on the computer if you look at this on a computer it looks so much better but that is the main bulk of my work in fact that is literally everything I did for my final project there was also like four written tasks four essay style things but yeah that was the main bulk of the work so I'm just going to talk about why I didn't enjoy it because I've got a lot of questions saying what was the point in it like on my Instagram the other day I said that I'd completed the course and loads of people were like what was the point if you're not going next year why did you apply for it generally so i'm just gonna like run through those in a second the lighting might be slightly different because i need to go and change my camera battery and then come back but we're just gonna ignore that it's been a little bit of time hence the lighting change um but as i said this video is just so laid back i don't think it matters you guys aren't looking at the lighting if you are sorry <laughs> there's nothing you can really do about it but yeah anyway so that was my work throughout the year each like stage was graded exactly the same so the dogs decided now's a great time to have a stretch over there but yeah in reference to why i did the course in the first place what the course like taught me and stuff academically it didn't really teach me anything uh, other than what i'd already learned at a level it gave me a lot more insight into the adobe suite which was actually really helpful so i'm going to give it its credit where it's due like photoshop and indesign and adobe illustrator i didn't have any knowledge on before like i somehow got through two years of a level photography with no knowledge of photoshop which was like weird and also really difficult but now i do know photoshop and i use photoshop all the time i use it to make my thumbnails now which i never used to do and yeah i'm really grateful for that obviously i could have just taught myself it the reason i did the course initially was because i didn't really think i wanted to go to university i didn't know what i would do if i did go to university and i knew that i well i thought i knew that if i did go i would want to do something creative and i picked the lead foundation course because it offered photography alongside advertising which at the time in year 13 i thought that was maybe something i wanted to go into like commercialized photography or fashion photography i now have changed my mind i don't want to be a photographer at all i really don't like love photography at the moment i've completely fallen out of love with it which is fine because i know i'll fall back in love with it it's just because the course has killed it for me i just need a little bit of time for it to come back but right now i don't think i want to be a photographer at all but at the time that's that's kind of what i thought i wanted to do i maybe thought like i might want to do a degree in it and i thought that if i really loved the foundation course then i might go on to do a degree in photography and advertising like that was what i thought might happen what actually happened was that i didn't enjoy it and it made me not want to go to university but i thought in my head when i applied either way it's going to teach me i either love it or i don't love it and it did and i'm grateful for that and i'm really really happy that i had the experience and one of the things that i am the most proud of is the fact that i actually got to the end of it and got the qualification because yes okay it's not a degree but it is an additional qualification from my a level so it's like one little step up it's all graded at like level four I think it's not a degree but I did get to the end of it and if you'd have seen me like genuinely if you'd have seen me at the beginning I really really did not think I would finish it I was when I say I was close to dropping out of this course you guys do not realize how close I was to actually dropping out like I spoke to my mum and dad about coming to pick me up I had looked into loads of other options I had applied for work experience like I'd looked into work experience to do over Christmas because I thought I would be back at home like I had literally I had in my mind already dropped out from week two or three and the the only thing that changed my mind was the fact that I knew I should give it a bit more time and I should give it a bit more time and maybe Leeds will get better and maybe I'll start enjoying it more and then I made friends with Eleanor and you guys know Eleanor through the vlogs now and I became really close friends with her and she didn't really enjoy it either and then we kind of had each other and then before I knew it it was literally Christmas and there was no point in dropping out because I was close to the end as I was to the beginning so I might as well just finish it so for my personal like satisfaction it's not anything to do with qualifications nothing to do with how employable I am but just for my own sense of 
I overcame that. I'm pretty happy that I did it because it was probably one of the hardest decisions and the lowest and the most confused I felt about anything. And I think if you've dropped out of university or you've thought about dropping out of university, you will know exactly what I mean. And I thought if it makes me decide that I wanna go to university, it will have been worth it. And then I will go like the rest of everybody else next year. And if I don't, then I haven't lost anything. But yeah, that is pretty much everything. They were my final pieces for my course. Lottie, are you okay? Do you wanna go for a wee? Okay, she's gone for a wee, I'm back. Kind of the end of this course. This is probably the last time you'll hear me speak about it. I'm totally done with it and I never have to go back to that university again. While I'm in the situation I am where I can earn enough from YouTube to make it a full-time job, I really would just like to do that for as long as I can and I think that I almost feel guilty for saying that and I wish that I didn't because I feel like it's not a traditional route and nobody else really does that and it's a little bit frowned upon to just go straight from school into like employment or to a lot of people it looks like I'm not doing anything which I really really dis dislike and it's so hard to explain it to people that don't understand it because how can you explain something that is so new and so confusing like it's just mad but yeah for the time being I'm just doing YouTube full time I want to travel a lot I don't have any plans of going back into education but we shall just see. I am more than open to a lot of ideas. I want to work abroad maybe for a little bit. I would love to go to Australia, as I mentioned. There's loads of things I want to do. There's so many things that I have like planned, none of them involving university, but who knows, Like my mind changes all the time. So I'm not sitting here saying I will never go to uni, but I'm sitting here saying right now, I really don't see that happening. But yeah, I'm gonna end this video here. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you don't mind that it was casual, that I've barely got any makeup on, that I'm sat on my living room floor. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. If you did, give it a huge thumbs up. As you're watching this, I'm actually currently on a flight to Italy because I am traveling Italy with my friend from uni, Eleanor, for the next two weeks. So those vlogs will be coming in two weeks time when I'm back. Definitely subscribe down below so that you see them and I shall be back on Saturday with a vlog. Bye!